I'm here with one of Oliver Fisher's uh, commercial and residential solicitors. He'll be talking us through the process of conveyancing, whether you're um, a first-time seller or first-time buyer, just to get you familiar with the process. So thank you so much for meeting with me today. Yeah, pleasure. Um, can you introduce yourself to, to everyone? Yes, uh, my name is Ali Razan Urbash. I'm a, a commercial property and residential um, conveyancing uh, solicitor at Oliver Fisher. Um, and I'm happy to uh, talk you through uh, conveyancing procedure today. How would the process from instructing an agent to sell and having the sale agreed, um, how would that then pass on to you? What would be the first step? Uh, the first step is for the client to get in touch with us and to instruct us after uh, agreeing to the cost involved in the quotation they usually get. Once they are instructed, then we ask the uh, uh, state agent to issue a memorandum of sale and, uh, and basically noting all the parties involved and so we can uh, contact with the buyer solicitors mm -hmm. uh, and everybody has to confirm the instruction at this point. Um, after that, uh, we, we will send a, a number of forms to the seller, our okay. client, uh, to complete before uh, we can actually uh, send a draft contract to the buyer solicitors. What sort of information are you asking for in that initial form? Yes, the initial forms, uh, there are uh, usually two forms. It's a freehold property, it's fixture and fittings, basically what's included in the sale of the property and what's excluded. Okay. Uh, and uh, the other form is property information form, uh, basically detailed information about the, the, the property boundaries and whether there's been any dispute and um, whether there's uh, uh, guarantees uh, available uh, with, the, with respect to the work done on the property and okay. items such as that. So the buyer has a full view of the property they're buying. Good. And, and if it's a leasehold, there, should, there, there will be an additional leasehold uh, uh, information form that they have to complete and uh, also the, uh, another form which is the leasehold questionnaire form which is LP1. It usually goes to the managing agent and they have to uh, provide details about the service charge, insurance, the future works on the property and items such as that. Yeah, something that we used to get quite often um, when it came to the LP1 forms and selling a leasehold property, um, I think there's a lot of people who may relate to this is the the pace at which you get the responses back from the, the management agent is there any advice you can give to really expedite that part of the the process because we find obviously as agents we try and, and, and expedite that by calling them and saying please can you fill this form in as soon as possible not to hold up the sale yeah. is there anything else that you agents or sellers could possibly do to, to speed it up yes uh, obviously from managing agent to managing the, the process is different, but I, I completely agree with you. One of the things you can do to expedite it, to just basically, uh, at the beginning of the process, identify the managing agent right away and send the LPE one and do not wait for the buyer to uh, to ask for LPE one. So, and the second thing is basically make sure you, you send the fees to the managing agent by uh, bank transfer, don't send a check because they usually take about five or six working days wow. until the check is cleared yeah. in order to respond. Yeah. So that's, that's brilliant. That, that is something we often had come up, you know, come up and it delays yeah. the process at such an early yeah. stage. That's you right. know, when it could be a much, um, if it's just a case of responding with the answers to those questions, mm -hmm it would just be a much quicker first hurdle, wouldn't it? So, sorry, yeah, so from there, what would be the next step once you had the LPE one form and all the documentation? Well, then we draft a contract and uh, based on the, you know, the information we have on the purchase price and the parties involved and, uh, and send the contract together with all the uh, completed forms and all the documents that we receive from the, 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 the sellers, such as if there is a planning permission or building regulation certificate or gas certificate. So it's important that the uh, client provide all the documents available because 
usually uh, they, uh, if they don't uh, and the, 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 the buyer searches show up certain documents registering into property they will then ask for these documents mm -hmm. and so the sooner we actually provide all the documents we ex the, the, the sooner we can actually complete the deal that makes sense and yeah. I think this is again something that's come up with if, if we're not getting all the details to your solicitor it actually does take time for the solicitor to then communicate with the other side's um, um, conveyancing team and then getting their documentation over because again what should maybe be a case of sending over a copy or sending over hard copies where necessary um, of any guarantees um, it does actually slow the process down depending on the processes in place for different uh, conveyancing firms so whatever documentation you have on your property um, put it out there, give it to your conveyancer and let them have all the answers ready for your buyer and it really does speed the process up. Mm, yes, if you absolutely. don't have it, it slows it right down as well. Um, so sort of from there, what would you say is the so next? So after, after that, the, usually the buyer will take a few days to review the documents and they raise inquiries. The, uh, the inquiries raise, uh, I mean, the ranges from uh, issues about the as I said, the planning permission, building regulations, certificates, and uh, based on the answers that our clients, the seller, has provided, they will they will ask further sort of uh, questions. For example, if the seller said there's been an uh, incident of flooding in the past in the, in the property, the buyer wants to know that the matter has been dealt with yeah. satisfactorily and all the invoices have been paid and uh, that sort of um, questions that we raise. Um, then we, we, we go back all these questions, uh, with these questions we go back to uh, our clients. Some of these questions of course there are factual questions that they, our clients only can answer that. Yeah. So we go back to them and they, once they provide answers to us and, and, and if there are any other questions that basically requires our, our um, makes a direct response such as undertake to clear the service charge on completion uh, we, we answer those questions and then we, when we have a complete uh, list of answers to all the questions we send it back to the buyer and this process goes back and forth <laughs> yeah, it, it can <laughs> yeah it can yeah. for a while until the buyer is satisfied yeah. that uh, all the questions are, are uh, answered properly and once that's done, then we have to basically agree on an exchange date and a completion date okay. and ask the clients to come to sign the papers, which consist of the transfer. Mm -hmm. uh, transfer of deeds. Yeah, transfer of deeds and also the contract. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think something prior to this stage, uh, which we obviously we, we get asked as well, or we come across, which can you know, cause a substantial delay sometimes, depending on the property and anything against it, um, is indemnity insurance. So yes. people will, you might hear this mentioned, um, whether you're selling a leasehold or freehold, you can come across mm. this. So in terms of describing, because there's a there's not much clarity there can be some confusion as to what is indemnity insurance so yes. just to cover that what would you how would you best describe indemnity insurance indemnity insurance usually um, uh, insure insurance policy that the sellers have will secure against lack of documents right. um, certain for example if you don't have building regulation certificate and it's registered against the property it's one way to deal with it is uh, to provide indemnity insurance uh, and uh, for example another usual um, scenario would be when you've done something in the property um, and for example certain alterations yeah. and you haven't secured the consent of the landlord um, and uh, that would be the breach of the terms of the lease because all the alteration has to be with the landlord's consent. Mm -hmm. So what would happen in scenarios like that, instead of going to the landlord and, and because of the cost involved and, and the possibility the landlord may not give its consent mm -hmm. uh, for retrospective consent for the alteration done. So you provide indemnity insurance. Okay. And the cost of these ins indemnity insurance again varies slightly from one insurance company to another. 
So would you recommend shopping around for getting that policy in place yeah. instead of just going with one? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay, it's been really helpful. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Um, and I hope it's sort of, um, if you are a first time seller, um, sometimes the process can be different. Um, and obviously, for first time buyers, it's just good to get an idea that there are going to be lots of forms to fill in. Um, a lot of this is to do with it's all legalities. Um, so, things like obviously money laundering, anti money laundering forms, and that's why you get asked for identification. Um, so, I hope you found this helpful in terms of whether you're buying for the first time or selling for the first time. Um, my advice is definitely um, when it comes to the quotations on your conveyancing, every conveyancer will recommend getting maybe a couple of quotes um, based on obviously who, no matter who if you're a seller or a buyer, get a couple of quotes, costs can vary. And please know that I think it's very important to say that the, the cheapest quote isn't necessarily the best one, it is all unpacked in this service. So cheap isn't always best. You will get value for money, especially from your conveyances um, service perspective as well, and I'm sure you'll agree is get a few quotes, but cheap isn't always best. You want a conveyancer who will look after you and look after the process as well. Thank you so much for meeting with me today. My pleasure.